There he is, Toby Data. Hello, folks. This is Frederick recording live on, uh, what are we on, Toby? This is FaceTime or? FaceTime. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's Facebook, Facebook Messenger, yeah. So we're on Facebook Messenger, my friends. And the idea is that I am going around and I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. And it's called Real People, Real Stories. And that's people from all cultures, all religions, sexual orientation, rich people, poor people. It don't matter. I just want to hear what people's stories are and how life is breathed into them and then how they breathe life into others. So I'm going to ask Toby, my buddy, a few questions. And we're going to put his video out there on YouTube. Ruah is Breath of Life. That's the channel on YouTube. So go there and you'll see more stories. And you can follow the daily vlog with Frederick at Ruah Nation. So let's get back to Toby. All right, Toby. There you are, my friend. So the first question I have to ask you here is question number one. Tell me... What does it mean for you personally to have people breathe life into you? Like, and I, I, I have no expectations what the answers would be, but for you just to have a gut check for real this time, what breathes life into you? Um, personally, I'd say my parents, first of all, they, they always there, you know, whenever I need them, like, can you hear me properly? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I can hear you. Louder is always better. Breathing life, breathing life into something just means taking something that's old, making it new, something that's dead, giving it life again, you know? So, like, whenever someone's down, you know, just giving them, the, giving them that hope they need, the motivation they need to, like, you know, to carry on. So, like, whatever it is, words of advice, good things you do to them. Yeah, just something old, making it new again, you know? Reviving something, basically. Resurrection, baby. Yes. Resurrection. So, do you find that your parents breathe life into you more with their conversations? Or your brother's family? Um, I see my parents, first of all, because um, they are my motivation. You know, like, I do look up to them, everything I do. You know, um, they are the reasons, they are the reason why I'm here, first of all, you know. So, like, they just, they push me to, you know, make, to be the most I can. My brothers, too, I mean, even though they are a little annoying <laughs> once in a while, you know, you know, we you, you fight once in a while, but still, you know, like, like, Damien, for example, man, those, some of the conversations I have with them, and he's like, yeah, I've been through this before, you know, like, I've had this problem before, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, just, just push through it, pull through it, everything's going to be all right, and that just... That just makes makes me feel a lot better. It just gives me the energy I need, the motivation I need to, to conquer whatever it is that's happening. Yeah. Well, let me push you a little bit further. Are you part of, uh, I mean, what do you do for fun? Like, do you like sports, movies, video games? Do you like running, painting, singing? Are there any other areas of life that, you know, get you passionate, get you excited, that kind of bring fire to your soul, breathe life into you? Soccer and track and field. Like, Atta you know, boy. Those two sports, I just, I just have these, these chills. I just, ah, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm field right now. I was, I was road racing right now. I was, I was competing right now. It's something about competition. I love to compete. It's, <laughs> it, I don't know why. It's a good thing and a bad thing. But I just, I love competition, you know. And thinking about it too. Like, I, I used to be just a soccer guy before, you know, play soccer all the time, and I switched to track and field. And then I used to train with um, these guys at the UFC. And when I first started, these guys made me look so weak. They made me look like I was the slowest person <laughs> on this planet. When we were in the weight room, they lift, like, ridiculous amount of weights. And I'm just like, wow, you know, I hope I, hope I can get there one day, you know. And I had this coach, too. Her name was Brandon. She... She she always used to say just, just like she never had she never took no for an answer, you know. So whenever yeah. she's like, "Oh, Brenda, I'm tired. Uh, just do one more set, you know. You're fine." One more. Oh, Brenda, I'm tired. No, come on, Toby, you, you got this. Just go, just do it one more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, she she also she pushed she pushed a lot too. And the funny thing about her is that you, if you if you see her, she's 
she's this calm like person you wouldn't think someone who looks like that can push you to what you, what you need to do so like for her to she was, she was a, she, she did a lot for me in that aspect as well breathing life because those days where you just oh fuck, I think I'm gonna throw up right now <laughs> I think I'm done for today time out I'm, I'm going home it's like nah no Toby you know do one more, you know, one more after that, one more after that, keep going, keep going. So that's just that motivation, that fire you need, you know. Well, you see, I think that is a great answer because we need people in our lives to push us. And that'll, that'll be parents, I think, for sure, you know, but probably coaches. I'm with you. I can relate to that. Coach is definitely significant. I'll unpack that a little more in another video as well. But I'm interested in this second question we like to ask people is what does it mean for Toby to breathe life into other people. How do you make a difference in the life of somebody else? How do you breathe life into this world? What do you do? For me, I have a passion of um, helping, like helping out with uh, the young kids. Like I coached at the summer camp for like two months. Right. I helped that church with um, with the grade two to four boys. I did that a while back. I just have this passion. Like I, I just. I just I enjoy that so much. I just enjoy teaching people, you know, like, this is what you're supposed to do here. It's just like my brother does for me. He's like, oh, I've been here before, you know, I've had this experience before, you know, this is what I think you should do for my experience, you know, so, like, I have two, two little brothers as well, you know, like, Femi, Femi is like yep. 11 right now, and he's like, oh my God, he comes home, like, what's wrong? He's like, so this kid said to me today, he's like, I almost fought him, I almost put him, <laughs> yo, just, because Femi's a big guy, and I know Femi could probably take anyone in his way. Femi's a big guy. I mean, that's not the way to go, man. Like, you're going to have these people in your life that try to pull you down. You know? just, just don't, don't bother, man. Do what you have to do. Do, do your school work, play your sports, play football, you know, just, just do it. So I, I enjoy that, too, because I noticed that helping others also it reflects on you. It helps you, too. So, like, you know, just helping them out, you're also kind of helping yourself in a way. Absolutely. You more about yourself. You learn more about yourself from helping people out so also that's one of the ways yeah. you know what just to like unpack that a little bit more like I totally agree with that because you know sometimes it's when we're volunteering or serving or trying to be a part of somebody else's life and man I don't care if you just go for coffee or you just sit down you know somebody once told me a lot smarter than me that you need to have somebody in your life you need to have people in your life that love you enough to give you a hug when you need a hug and give you a kick in the ass when you need a kick in the ass. You know, and that's sometimes what big brothers can do. And you volunteering at soccer camps and sports camps and, you know, just getting involved with, with like kids sports and stuff like that. I mean, that's exactly what we need. You know, my parents divorced when I was young and it was hockey coaches that stepped up and they kind of were like a, a bigger brother or a father figure to me. So, you know, I would just encourage you keep doing that because trust me, I believe that that's breathing life into other people, not just your brothers, but those kids that sign up for soccer camp or whatever, wherever you're, you're helping out with younger people. So kudos, good on you, brother. Um, don't hang up yet. I'm just going to pull the camera back. So, okay, my friends, there you have my, my, my buddy over here, Toby Dada, and uh, that's his story. And it's hard in five or six, seven minutes to, to really share your whole heart, but I think he did a great job. And we're going to continue to travel and talk to different people, all kinds of people. It don't matter, like I told Toby earlier, you could be rich, poor, I don't care your skin color sexual orientation i mean i don't care it, it, what it is we're all human we're all different we all have a story but i believe that you need life breathed into you and you need to breathe life into others and that's what the youtube channel rua is all about so until next time we're going to sign off and i'm going to talk to toby a little longer so from rua nation this is frederick and this is toby my friend over here there you go and this is my cat, Snuffleupagus, and we're going to sign off and tell you to keep tuning in and subscribe, hit the like button, and if you look down in this corner here, there's probably a square box. That's where you can help support Ruan Nation, 
or go to the circle and subscribe and like some videos and we'll keep making them. Frederick is on every day vlogging. So God bless, take care, and we love you. All right, Toby, you want to say see you later? See you later, guys.